Hello parents, this is Ms. Fang, your assistant principal here at Crown Point. Uh, today, I want to take some time to talk to you guys about middle school course selection for next school year. So this presentation is specifically for our rising 6th, 7th, and 8th grade students. So I'm going to go through our agenda for today. Our agenda consists of we're going to talk first about course progression, and that is how students move from one year to the next, the courses they have to take in order. Uh, we'll talk about course placement, electives, and then a short note about schedule changes. So first we'll talk through the course progression for language arts, history, and science because they have the most basic course progressions. As you can see on the screen, uh, there are three categories, language arts, history, and science, Every student in 6th, 7th, and 8th, they will have to take a course that falls into those categories. So first, as a 6th grader for language arts, you have the option of language arts 1 or language arts, um, advanced language arts 1. So it's one of those two courses. For history, your options are world history or advanced world history, and then for science, it's comprehensive science 1 or advanced comprehensive science 1. We'll talk a little bit more about advanced placement courses um, a little later in the presentation, but those are the options for sixth grade. So it's very cut and dry for most subjects. Um, same in seventh and eighth. The difference in seventh and eighth in, is in science. So as a seventh grader, you can either take comprehensive science two, which is your standard science class, or if you're an advanced student, you have an option of taking the advanced comp two, or you can go ahead and take the comprehensive science three, which is an eighth grade class. So that would be for students who are prepared to or are preparing to take biology as an eighth grader. And then eighth graders have the option of taking comprehensive science three, or they would take biology one, which is a high school course. And there are a few notes about the high school courses that we'll discuss when we get into the math course progression. There is a note at the bottom that says that class placement is determined by FSA scores. So we do take into consideration whether or not the student wants to be an advanced course, but ultimately their placement is determined by the teacher's recommendation as well as their scores in FSA and iReady and NWEA. So math course progression is a little bit more complicated because it has a few different options in order to, um, depending on how you want your student to end high school and in middle school. So there are three main pathways students can take in math. Um, in two of the three pathways, students will learn content at an accelerated pace that includes the completion of one or more high school math courses by the end of eighth grade. So they could either end with Algebra 1 as an eighth grader or they would end with Geometry as an eighth grader. It depends on the path that they take. So if you look at option A, it's really recommended for your students who earned a level one or two on the math FSA. Um, and some students may even be placed in an intensive course depending on uh, how they score. So that option A is the standard course progression for math. Sixth grade, you would take grade six math. Seventh grade, you would take just grade seven math. And then eighth grade would be eighth grade pre-algebra, which prepares you to take algebra one as a ninth grader. Option B is an accelerated path. So this is recommended for students who earned a level two three or four on the FSA. It depends on the student. If you're a high two, uh, we may still uh, place you in an accelerated math, especially if you're an AVID student. And then if you're a three or a four, because this is an accelerated um, pathway to get to algebra. Um, one thing that we do a little different here in at Crown Point is we usually will place students, instead of that accelerated math seventh grade, we'll place them in pre-algebra to prepare them to take that algebra class as an eighth grader. So um, option C is an even more accelerated pathway, which a lot of our um, gifted students take. And they either take, the, they, you can take that accelerated math in, in sixth grade or pre-algebra in sixth grade, which prepares you for algebra one as a seventh grader and geometry as an eighth grader. Um, option C is really recommended for students who earned a level five on the FSA um, because it is very accelerated and it skips a lot of middle school math content and places you into high school content. So we are, we're very, um, this, this pathway is not for every student, but if you think that your student can handle that and they have the scores that prove that, then we can consider placing them in that pathway. It's very important to keep in mind that once you start on the pathway, you can't deviate from it. It has, you have to continue on that path. 
So course placement, if you're thinking about those accelerated pathways, how, how do we get to that point? What do we need to keep in mind? So some things you want to think about, has your student had prior success with math? So in, in, in any of the advanced classes, if they have been struggling in, in ELA or they've struggled in science or they're struggling in math, if they, they're, they're, they won't be prepared for that accelerated course. And we don't want to place a student into a course that we don't think that they, we're, we don't think they'll be successful. Um, specifically for math, do, does your student show an interest in mathematics, including in a real world setting? If they are very interested in math and that's one of their favorite classes, then placing them in an accelerated math class makes sense and it'll work for them. Is your student willing to commit time outside of school to study for the course? Accelerated pathways can mean that they're, they need to spend that time building math skills because they're skipping certain years of math. If I go straight from fifth grade math to seventh grade math, I'm missing those sixth grade skills. And so I may have to fill those gaps while I'm learning new content. And that is not an easy thing for any student to do. Um, has your student set future academic goals in both high school and beyond? The main reason that students choose to uh, participate in Algebra 1 Geometry as a middle school student is to ensure that they are prepared in high school to take pre-calculus calculus courses. So it's important that you think in terms of how is this going to prepare my student for the future? Does this place them on the path that they, are, they, they want to be on as a high schooler and then as a college student, if that's where their, their, um, their goals are? Do school-based personnel, such as teachers, guidance counselors, and administrators, recommend this accelerated pathway for your student? So your, your child's math teacher, your child's science teacher, is a perfect person to talk to about whether or not they should be in an accelerated path. Um, if they are they're doing very well, and they understand the concepts, um, and your, your teacher think that, that they'll be successful, then they probably will be successful. But if they're struggling in class and the teacher does not agree, then we have to take a look at their scores a little differently. Is this going to place them um, and set them up for success? The main benefit of taking the high school math courses in middle school is to ensure advanced placement courses when they get to 11th or 12th grade. Students who do not take high school courses in middle school, however, can still have these options if they take an additional course in 9th or 10th grade. Now, there are a few risks to taking the high school math courses in middle school, and this is very, very, very important. When you're on that accelerated pathway and you move through those foundational middle school content very quickly to get to the high school classes, uh, it creates content gaps and it, it, it changes, it makes it a weaker foundation in math. This can be uh, detrimental to a student if they're already struggling in math. The other thing to keep in mind is that when students take Algebra 1 and Geometry and Biology actually in middle school, those classes count towards high school credit because they're high school classes. So whatever you make in those classes, that's the GPA you start with as a ninth grader. So if you fail or uh, you have a D in algebra and then you go on to ninth grade, you started your high school career with a 1.0 GPA because you have that D. That's the first thing on your record. So if, you're, if your student isn't ready, prepared for that responsibility, they don't have to be placed in it. It is not a requirement, even for a student who's gifted um, who, or who's taken some advanced classes previously. And so we want to make sure that we take all of that into consideration when we're thinking through these decisions. We will place students based on um, their coursework and their test scores. But if you as a parent you know, are not sure about your student being in some of those classes, we can have that conversation as well. Um, so overall, students are placed in, in their uh, classes based on test scores. So we're talking FSA, NWA, iReady. Any of our mobile students, if you're looking to be placed in those classes, you have to come on campus to test because we have to have a data to support your student being in that class. Students who score significantly below grade level in reading or math, they may be placed in remediation courses. Um, we'll have different um, things like our Powerball where we're trying to assist those students to ensure that they get the support that they need. Um, so electives. This is the portion of the presentation that I know many of our students are looking at because they want to see what's going on with electives for next year. So electives, all middle school students are required to take PE for at least one semester each year of middle school. Sometimes you'll see that uh, based on scheduling, students might end up with a year long PE course, but they are required at minimum to take a semester of PE. 
unless they have a waiver um, and we discuss that in certain situations. Sixth grade students are required to take one semester of AIA. That's that social emotional class um, and you're automatically placed in AIA. It doesn't have to be requested. All students will be able to identify electives that they are interested in taking and we're going to talk through what electives are available this year um, as well as the ones that we're adding next year. Electives are not guaranteed. Students are placed based on scheduling needs. So what that means is um, if your only availability, let's say, is fifth period to take music, but music isn't offered that period, you won't have music. And it has nothing to do with the fact that, you know, we're, we're purposely not placing you in classes that you want. It's based on the scheduling needs and the master schedule as a whole. So there's a lot of moving pieces in that. I try my best to take into consideration classes that students like, but it doesn't always work perfectly. And so a lot of students this year, you might have gotten two electives that you really, really like, and maybe another elective that you weren't a huge fan of. But our goal is to cycle students through all of the electives so that every student has a chance to take art. Every student has a chance to take music throughout their three years here with us. Here's a look at our list of current electives. These are the electives that we offer to students this school year. Uh, they're divided into two categories, full year electives and semester electives. The full year electives would mean that the students would have in both semesters. So that's the fall semester, which is August to December, as well as the spring semester, which is January to May. Um, just a quick note about some of the full year electives. Uh, band students do requ are required to either rent or purchase an instrument. Uh, more details about that is provided by Mr. Mason uh, for any students that are interested in BAN. Uh, for AVID, it is by application only. It's an application as well as an interview process for students to be considered for the AVID elective. Uh, Mr. Mack and Mr. Sawchuck are the coordinators who can provide more details about that process. Um, 3D studio art, journalism, and student government are classes that are only for 7th and 8th grade students. So 6th grade students are not eligible to select those classes for this school year. Um, and musical theater is by audition only. Uh, audition information and the requirements for that will be provided to students very soon. Um, and that's from Ms. Blatherwick. She'll be providing the details about the auditions. Um, and for the semester electives, just one note about the music class. It is a basic music class, which means there is no instrument required. Um, and all of the semester electives, a student could have it have that elective either in the fall or in the spring. We are adding some new electives for the 21-22 school year. Um, on the full year side, we have the instrumental techniques in that class. It will be uh, specifically for students wanting to learn how to play the drums. So um, all the students in that class would have the opportunity to learn how to play drums specifically. Um, there is a keyboard class where students will be learning to play the piano, where we'll be purchasing some keyboards. Um, and this is specifically for students who have never had any experience um, playing the piano previously. Um, our STEM environmental science class is going to involve the aquaponics farm. Um, so that class is for students who are very interested in science. Um, there'll be some other aspects, but they're a big part of that is going to be working in the aquaponics farm. Um, on the semester elective side, we have a very uh, a beginning Spanish class that will be for any student who is not a Spanish speaker. Uh, we also have a theater class. Uh, this is a little different from musical theater. Um, this will be basic acting. Um, for students who are interested, it does, they do not have to have previous experience. Um, and we also will be adding a chorus class. Um, and just like the other ones, they are, this is a, a beginner class. So students do not have to have previous experience. I want to take a few moments to address schedule change requests. So we utilize PowerSchool um, to schedule students. So it's programmed to ensure that classes are balanced. Um, it decides how many of each section we need um, and will place students based on teacher recommendations, test scores, um, etc. So schedule changes will not be made um, unless there is a misplacement. So for example, if a student is placed in the wrong math class or the wrong ELA class or something like that, we will make that adjustment in the first uh, week or two of school. Uh, however, accommodations are not made to allow for parental preferences or for teachers and courses. So, I mean, we're a very small middle school. So as far as our core classes, 
uh, students. There is one math teacher in each grade level. There's one ELA, science and social studies. Um, there are a few different elective teachers, but we won't be changing any student schedules based on any parental preferences. Um, in regards to electives, we will not be making any changes to schedules based on electives because we do utilize the automated system and it makes decisions on what schedule works best for the needs of the student's entire schedule. Electives are actually scheduled last. It first ensures that all of the academic classes are in place and then wherever we have space, that is where we insert electives. So we will not be taking any schedule requests, um, schedule change requests for any students that would like to change electives. Um, for the most part, semester classes will only be a semester long. In certain situations, based on you know a student's need, we may have them take a semester class um, for, for a full year because that, that's what is allowed in their schedule and we weren't able to change them to another class. But we take that on a case by case basis and it does not apply to all students. We do make every effort to ensure that students get to uh, have elective courses that they prefer, but it is not always possible to for every student to get their first choice electives. So that's why we'll ask you to select you know, four to six electives that you're interested in, and then we try to work in the electives that we can into your schedule. This year, to select your courses for next school year, we will be using the automated system in PowerSchool. So students will be able to make their selections by logging into their PowerSchool accounts. You can see this from the parent uh, portal or the student portal in PowerSchool. The deadline to make these selections will be April 9th, 2021. Uh, no adjustments can be made after that deadline. It will actually close in PowerSchool, so you won't have access at that point. Uh, if a student has not made any selections, administration will make those selections uh, in PowerSchool for the students. So you want to make sure that if you want to let us know what your electives are for next year or what elective choices you want for next year, you must make your selections in PowerSchool before April 9th. Uh, parents and students will need access to their PowerSchool account. Uh, that was given out at the beginning of the year. If you have been unable to get into PowerSchool, please contact the front office or your child's homeroom teacher. They will be able to provide you with the PowerSchool letter so you can get into the account. If there are any issues, we can, of course, make the selections on our, on the admin side. So just let us know if you're not able to access it or if there's issues with accessing it. We'll make sure that we get your selections in. Once you log into PowerSchool, it'll take you to the grades and attendance page first, and it looks like this. Uh, what you'll have to do is scroll down the screen and find where it says class registration. Click on class registration, uh, and once you click that button, it'll take you to this screen. Uh, which is the registration screen. So the first thing that you'll see, um, it'll tell you at the top that this is the registration screen and that is open until April 9th. And of course, you can contact me if you have questions about the courses. Um, the first thing you'll see is the core courses. Uh, all the core courses uh, and PE have already been added to your student's request. You don't have to do anything to this section. So you can just scroll past it because every student will have their core classes added for them. The next section is for PE. So if your student wants to take the full year PE instead of the semester PE, then they want to click that little pencil button to in order to access that. Um, and once they click that button, it's going to open up a new screen. In the new screen, they will select the button, the, click the little box right next to the course name, and then click OK. Once they've done that, it will add that additional PE course to their request, and I will know on my side that they want a full year PE. If your student does not want full year PE and wants to keep the semester PE, they don't have to do anything. They can just skip this section and don't click anything in there. On the next screen is your elective screen. On the elective screen, you're going to click that little pencil button, um, and here you're gonna select all the courses that you're interested in taking for next school year. You have to select at least four in order to continue. So once you select that button, that little pencil button to edit, it's going to take you to the elective screen. And you will be able to scroll down and view all of the electives that are offered for your grade level. If you're interested in a particular elective, you want to click the little box that's next to the elective that you're interested in. There are course descriptions on there that helps you to figure out whether or not it's a class you might be interested in taking. It gives you a little bit of details about the class. You'll scroll all the way down, select at least four classes to continue, um, and then you will click OK once you're done. You can select more than four, but you have to select at least four in order to move forward. 
The last box says additional requests. There are no additional requests to be made, so every student will skip that step. Uh, notice it already has a check mark, and you'll go scroll all the way to the bottom where it has a submit button. Once you've completed all your selections, you can click submit. Um, this screen will be open to you up until April 9th. So if you open it on one day and you make some selections and you decide that you want to change your mind, you can log right back in, make the adjustments, um, and then click submit again. So you'll be able to make adjustments. But once April 9th hits, the screens will close and it will only show you a confirmation of the electives that have been selected. Uh, that concludes our presentation. Just a few reminders. Uh, the course registration is now open. Uh, it closes on April 9th, 2021. Uh, if you have issues with PowerSchool or you need your PowerSchool access, you can contact the front office. Uh, you can call our front office or you can email or call your homeroom teacher. Um, all teachers will have access to that information for PowerSchool as well as the front office will have access for the entire school. If you have any questions about the course selections, uh, the process, or anything that we reviewed in this presentation, feel free to email me at abing at crownpointcharter.org. Uh, thank you guys for viewing, uh, and I hope you all have a great day.